My fellow Bahamians and residents, good afternoon. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, I have spoken to you on a regular basis to update and to inform you on our comprehensive and vigorous national response to this very contagious and deadly virus. I have sought to encourage you as well as to warn you of the danger of this virus to you and to your loved ones, business and labor stakeholders, the religious community and civil society. I have sought to unify the nation in the face of this terrible and widespread threat and effects of the virus on our health and our economy and our way of life. Let me say to you this afternoon, even with the resurgence of the virus we are experiencing, I want you to know that through courage, we will rebuild our economy and our society. I wish to provide you with updates and information. There are specific priority issues that I want to share with you and some of the details on how we are addressing them. My fellow Bahamians and residents, most of the world is experiencing a resurgence of the COVID-19 virus. International news reports indicate that in larger countries, someone is dying of COVID-19 approximately every eight minutes. This virus is so easy to catch and to pass on that it took approximately 100 days to spread around the world, affecting just about every Here at home, there are 777 active cases of COVID-19, including 35 in hospital. Today, the Ministry of Health reported 20 new cases, five here in New Providence and 15 in Grand Bahama. The total number of confirmed cases is now 898. And these cases include 417 in New Providence, 389 in Grand Bahama, key. 28 cases in Abaco, 12 cases in the Berry Islands, three cases in Cat Island, three cases in Exuma, and one in Elutra. Our four leading priorities during this pandemic are preserving life and health, providing basic social security and food assistance to those in need, boosting jobs and our economy, security and safety of Bahamians and residents. I wish to address various aspects of each of these priorities my fellow Bahamians and residents. Our response to this global pandemic has required your government to make sizable, non-budgeted financial investments to utilize privately owned facilities. Like even more advanced nations, we have had to make these added investments because the public health care system is severely limited in its ability to accommodate infected patients requiring inpatient care because on 20 beds. We are living in a healthcare environment with dramatically increasing use of health services by more critically ill patients as well as social cases 
at our Princess Margaret Hospital. There is also an exponential growth in healthcare costs. The current pandemic and the need to strengthen infection prevention and control practices, coupled with adherence to social distancing requirements, had led to an inevitable reduction in the overall bed complement at Princess Margaret Hospital. The regrettable longer require hospitalization has given rise to recurrent long-term borders. Many of these patients have comorbidities that make them particularly vulnerable to viral infections. They should not be in proximity to highly trafficked areas frequented by those with communicable diseases. As the Princess Margaret Hospital approaches capacity, with a limited number of hospital beds to treat those requiring inpatient care, the Public Hospitals Authority has sought alternate accommodations for the relocation of these borders. Nursing, case, and hospital administration is examining sites to determine their suitability as a care center for Princess Margaret Hospital's 33 borders. I want to repeat that 33 individuals who are permanently staying within the confines of the Princess Margaret Hospital as borders. Each of these individuals cost our hospital $491 per day or approximately $6 million per year. The Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Social Services will make the final necessary assessments and recommendations on accommodations to enable us to both further protect this vulnerable group while making critical bed space available at our Princess Margaret Hospital. Given the exponential increase in confirmed cases of COVID-19 requiring to utilize the East building of the hotel as a national response facility to meet the needs of non-COVID-19 low medical care patients during this pandemic. And this facility will accommodate both employees that are attending the patients on one floor and clinical and management operations on other floors. Security services will be provided by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, supplemented by the Public Hospital Authority contracted security firm. This facility will be up and running very shortly. I must note and be very clear that Princess Margaret Hospital is unable to manage this new patient care location without the tangible support of physicians and, and people of the Bahamas. I thank Breezes for the role it has played as a corporate citizen during this pandemic. The government has only been asked to cover only utility costs during the use of the hotel as the new national response facility. Moving forward, clinical management of confirmed and suspected COVID-19 cases will be treated at the following locations on New Providence. South Beach Center, mild to moderate presentation. Princess Margaret Hospital, moderate to severe presentations. Doctors Hospital, Health Systems West, medical and surgical patients at the main institution. The relocation from the Princess Margaret Hospital of Borders and the establishment 
of the new National Response Facility off-site will make available more beds so that COVID-19 patients can be more easily accommodated at our Princess Margaret Hospital. Doctors Hospital West is also increasing its bed capacity to help address the need. The combined strategy to increase bed capacity in the public and private healthcare systems will result in an increase of approximately 80 patient beds at this time. On Grand Bahama, the Cancer Society building COVID-19 patients. In addition, a new unit is being constructed on the Rand Memorial Hospital facility. As it relates to Grand Bahama and all other family islands, if the need arises, individuals will continue to be airlifted to New Providence, where the increased capacity has been prepared for the care of such patients. My fellow Bahamians and residents, recently, there's been some debate about the adequacy of personal protective equipment. Like most countries around the world, was faced with the realization that PPEs were among the most vital defenses in fighting the spread of this deadly virus. PPEs are essential for safety and protection, primarily in acute hospital settings. Let me state that the government has made the necessary investment in PPEs to ensure that all public health care workers, be they from this also ensures that those seeking treatment within our institutions are afforded the best care in the most sterile environment possible. The inventory, the inventory of PPEs are monitored daily. Key personnel within the supplies management agency identify the quantities of each specific stock on hand, the amount distributed to each public health care site, as well as the quantity of new supplies received at our warehouses. Our short-lived as the supplies management agencies use a top-up system that facilitate restocking as soon as inventory reaches a predetermined level. Let me also note that I have met with the leaders of the Nurses Union, Consultant Physician Staff Association Union, the Bahamas, to, to better benefit from the expertise and advice of the leaders of these unions, there will be separate bi-weekly meetings between myself, the Ministry of Health, Doctors Union, the Nurses Union, and internal briefings to union representatives from the Emergency Operations Center. My fellow Bohemians and residents, the government has established a contract for Bahamas. The center is manned by a group of public health experts with support from the Surveillance Unit, National Health Insurance Program, other government ministries and agencies, and private partnerships, including Alive and the Malia Hotel. This center will strengthen the surveillance unit's ability to identify new cases and con increase in the number of new cases over a short period of time. A decrease in new cases is anticipated once all new cases and contacts have been identified. It is important that members of the public cooperate fully and honestly 
if they are contacted by the surveillance unit. Your responsible behavior can help reduce the spread of COVID-19 in the Bahamas. My fellow Bahamians and residents, the pandemic public health, these necessary restrictions harm trade and commerce, slowing economies and cause joblessness and recession in order to save lives. The government has not laid anyone off or terminated contracts because of the current economic component of this crisis. Our strategy for economic recovery, my fellow Bahamians and residents, access to food is a basic human right around the world and here at home. People who have been self-sufficient their entire lives are now struggling to feed themselves and their families. Ensuring that our people in need are being helped is in my contribution to the recent budget debate, I noted the allocation of $16 million for food assistance. Your government is delivering on this commitment. We are now providing $1 million per week to the National Food Distribution Task Force for food assistance to ensure those who are truly in need of food are being helped. Our ta food task force is making every effort to preserve safety and preserve, never imagining that you would ever have to seek assistance to have enough food to eat. It is important at this time in the program to emphasize that first and foremost, the task force is implementing a needs-based program. We have set out to help those in our communities who are considered the most vulnerable. As we move forward, the task force three needs categories. The three categories include most vulnerable, moderate vulnerable, and least vulnerable. Assistance to these groups will be weekly, every other week, and once a month, respectively. This is to people like Mr. Knowles, who I am told registered for food assistance, but recently wrote back to the task force saying, I am well and God has provided me with more than enough. So I don't need any further assistance. Please provide it to those in need. Mr. Knowles's Noble action enables the task force to stretch the budget and help those who really need it most. At times, there are those who are in deep, deep need, while others are not struggling as much. The food assistance program is entering its 11th week. To date, 27,705 households have registered for assistance, representing more than 110,000 people across the length and breadth of our country. I have asked the task force to reach out to small grocery stores. We would like neighborhood mom and pop shops to participate in and benefit from this exercise with us. 
Hi, fellow Bahamians and residents. Your safety and your security are paramount. The Royal Bahamas Police Force continues to monitor possible criminal activities and to use its full complement of resources to help to prevent crime. The establishment of the COVID-19 Enforcement Unit, which will also utilize police quarantines and other measures designed to reduce the spread of this deadly virus. The Atlantic hurricane season does not end until November 30th. Both the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and the Disaster Preparedness Ministry remain on full alert. You should ensure as many basic preparations as possible. To assist with your preparedness, hardware stores are currently open for curbside services on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Construction is also permitted Monday through Saturday. I acknowledge your frustration with the extension of the lockdown and other measures. I need to state that the measures being taken with respect to your island, Grand Bahama, are not random or arbitrary. They're being strongly recommended by public health officials, and the government is resolute in seeing the island restored to good health. Health officials provided a brief this morning on the situation on Grand Bahama. The COVID-19 outbreak there is still not under control. In fact, it is very grave. I beg you in Grand Bahama, please, but we must do it together. We have expressed, you have expressed concern about access to food stores, given unique challenges that some continue to recover from Hurricane Dorian. As such, like Abaco, your shopping days will return to Monday through Friday for general public. On Saturday, the hours will also be extended for essential service workers. My fellow Bahamians and residents, I would like to address additional unique provisions were announced for Abaco and the Abaco Keys, including the addition of days to allow for grocery shopping and restaurant curbside and takeaway services. Abaco is still rebuilding from the devastation of Hurricane Dorian. Some residents do not have access to the resources available during normal circumstances. These provisions have been made to accommodate the unique circumstances on the island and its keys. Demic, Abaco, and Grand Bahama have been permitted to continue construction. Some have access to hardware and have access to gas stations to fuel generators. Many within both the eastern end of Grand Bahama and Abaco still do not have electricity. There is a genuine effort to consider the needs of our people while seeking to restore the health of the nation. My fellow Bahamian, beyond what is thought to be absolutely necessary, I am announcing today that based on the advice of health officials, normal commercial and social activity, including church services and the opening of beaches and parks, may resume on the following islands effective 5 a.m. Monday, the 10th of August. Mayor Guana, 
Inagua, Crooked Island, Acklands, Long Key, Long Island, Rum Key, and Ragged Island. The lockdown and curfew has been lifted for these two weeks. Though there are no confirmed cases on San Salvador, a travel-related swab is pending test results. Further assessment is required for this island before it can be given the all clear. Travel between the islands where the lockdown has been lifted will be permitted without the COVID-19 testing and 14-day quarantine requirements that are outlined in the emergency powers orders. The government, guided by the advice of health officials, will continue to monitor and assess COVID-19 developments on each island and determine on a case-by-case -case basis when it is safe to relax such measures. Reveal that there is a genuine need for greater access to food stores. We are hopeful. The following changes will help this while not compromising the public health objective. These include the extension of food store hours to 7 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The extension of food store hours to 6 p.m. on Saturday for essential service workers. And enabling food stores to restock on Tuesday, Thursday, and now Sunday to ensure that shelves are fully stocked for designated shopping days. The Bahamas Pharmaceutical Association has raised issues regarding the services its members provide. Members of the public have also raised concerns regarding access to laundromats. We will continue discussions with the health professionals on joining ahead with this virus. Do not be misled by conspiracy theories, fake news, magical thinking, and fake therapies. We have to learn to live with this virus until there is a vaccine, pursuing the best policies and behaviors to allow commerce and interaction while also limiting infections. You all know the public health advice, sanitize your hands regularly and do not attend mass gatherings. As a government, we must learn from the policies we introduced that require adjustment. Let me be very clear on this point. I do not like lockdowns. I am also a businessman. I understand that small businesses are the heart and soul of our economy. Lockdowns disproportionately hurt small businesses. I also know that lock as a people social creatures. We need our friends, our colleagues, and loved ones as part of a meaningful life. We use lockdowns as last resort. When cases get out of control and no other measures would work, then we move to lockdowns. With Dorian hitting a year ago, and now the pandemic, our nation faces the most difficult period in our lifetime. To call this time unprecedented is an understatement. We must all work in unison through behavior, thought, practice, and policy to prevent the spread of by one, by any one of us, 
could put the whole nation at risk. That's how serious the times are. This afternoon, I once again express my heartfelt thanks and appreciation to the vast majority of Bahamians of all ages and circumstances who have demonstrated understanding and exercised, cooperated with efforts to save the lives and protect the health of their fellow Bahamians. These are the ones who are demonstrating the true, true Bahamian spirit, which has brought us through many trials and tribulations in our long history. They have followed the protocols advised by our healthcare professionals. They have respected the orders put in place for the protection of their loved ones and their neighbors. Indeed, for the protection of us all. Unfortunately, here at home, as in other countries around the world, it seems there are always some contrary souls who, for their own reasons, simply refuse to cooperate. Some of them may be educated, but they do not have much mother's wit. Some even go so far as to minimize the threat. Some try to undermine and mischaracterize our efforts. Some try to sow seeds of dissension at a time when we so desperately need national unity. Some who really ought to know better fuse and lockdowns. But I only ask of them to consider whether in these circumstances is it worth it undermine public health and to put at risk the very lives of their fellow citizens. I ask them again, is it truly worth it to put your brothers, your sisters, and your friends' lives at risk? Because it is to protect the public health and save Bahamian lives that we have mandated curfews and lockdowns is to save lives. We can rebuild our economy and we can rebuild our, create our Bahamas, but we cannot recreate lives. My fellow Bahamians, we enjoy the fellowship of shared citizenship. We are bound together by bonds of family and faith. We have a shared destiny to build a new Bahamas. It is always with great pride that I address you as fellow of resilience and hope. And may the God of new beginnings guide and protect us always. May God continue to bless each and every one of us. May God bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you and good day.